my very favorite thing about this camera has to be the color science. The obsessive TP. All right, so in this video, we're gonna talk about the key differences between this camera and this old beast. We got this DSMC2 camera about five years ago now. So we've had it five years. It's been really good to us. This is a powerhouse. Um, it's a solidly built camera. It has a lot of good features, but they definitely hit some key upgrades with the new Raptor. Now we've had the Raptor about four months. We've shot 15 to 20 commercials on it, and I am really, really liking the look of it. This is a solidly made, solidly built camera, and uh, definitely has some key advantages over this one. So let's talk about that. The number one pro of the Raptor is the size. That's the first thing you're gonna notice when you look at these two cameras. One is considerably smaller. It's not massively smaller, but it is smaller. They did do some work in the smallness factor. And why is that useful? Well, for gimbal work. It's always nice to have a smaller, lighter camera um, when you're balancing on a steady cam, when you're using it on a jib. Basically every, every support item you can think of from tripod to jib to steady cam to gimbal, they all benefit with a lighter, smaller camera. A smaller footprint, it just, it's easier on the operator, you know, his arms. There's a lot of reasons why that helps um, on a production flow and they've nailed it with this tiny little square. This little cube is bigger than the Komodo, uh, but way more features than the Komodo. So definitely worth it. Number two on this guy, the processor. Red, you finally listen to us and we don't have a slow processor that feels like an iMac from the 80s. This thing actually is fast when you push the buttons. It actually, if you push menu, it goes to menu within a second. This old guy, it's got some work to do. You're gonna, you're gonna need to wait around a little bit when you're using the menu. You need, there's an extra ounce of patience that you have to have with this camera that you no longer need with this camera. So in, in intense production scenarios, which production is always somewhat tense, They've alleviated that for you guys. So you ACs and operators out there, you're gonna have a little less flutter flutter of your hearts when you use this camera versus this one. I've never seen this camera lock up yet. Oh, I have, ooh, I actually have seen this camera lag a bit using the full 600 frames per second at 2K widescreen. Now when you're doing that, it starts getting hot, uh, if you go to playback, you're gonna have a little bit of lag, but in a normal 24 frames per second, 8K scenario, I have not seen any lag. Next big difference between these two cameras is the SSD. Look at the size difference. Huge. This guy is so small, uh, yet they can still pack in 660 gigabytes in this tiny little package, which works Great, this, this is the fastest card. I haven't even heard of this card before this camera, but it is, it is so fast. One thing I missed though, is this, listen to this. That click, oh, it's so satisfying on set, so addicting. This just has this door, you know, kind of like an Airy Mini, Alexa Mini, kind of like an Alexa Mini, and you just pop it in. This is a little click, click sound. That's not as satisfying. You hear that in a lot of other cameras. Still cool, it's shiny if you get the red version. It's got less like super shininess. It's from Angel Bird, great company. I trust Angel Bird Media so far with my life because I have not seen any issues where I have seen a little issue with this guy. Now this camera is now full frame. This is large formats. So you can use large format lenses. You can get that extra out of focus bokeh with like a 35 millimeter, 24 millimeter that you're never gonna get with Super 35. So that's what's really cool. Also a little perk to this. This guy, if you're shooting full Super 35, you always have to shoot 8K. Once you start going 7K, 6K, 5K, 4K, it gets tighter on the lens. You're not gonna get as sharp with your lenses. But a cool perk about this is you don't have to shoot 8K. If you want Super 35, you just shoot 6K. Now, if you want full frame, you have to shoot 8K. But it, it's kind of cool because like for those smaller projects, the big 8K files are just 
so annoying to, to work with on the small project. So you can just shoot Super 35, grab Super 35 lenses. You have smaller, easier 6K files to work with versus 8K. And if you want that full sensor, you have to shoot 8K every time with the helium. So on the back of this camera, the old helium, you have one SDI port, just one. Here's an upgrade they made on the Raptor. You have two options. So you can send two different overlays or a, a screen without overlays or a screen with overlays to different people. How is that useful? Well, the director usually doesn't wanna see how much is left on the card or uh, the stoplights or if it's recording or not or have you know, a center overlay grid, all that stuff. It's just nice to have a clean feed to the client and the director. So you can send two feeds. You can send an AC, a feed with all that normal overlays so he can see how much is left on the card and if he's recording or not. And then director, get a clean feed. It's a sweet upgrade. I love having that versatility. Um, on this one, you're just locked in to one. Now there was HDMI on this. No one uses HDMI. It's not, uh, this isn't black magic. This is, so I, th that's why they got rid of it. <laughs> there, there has never been any HDMI in our production flow. So SDI is where it's at. Okay, the monitor on this thing is dope. Now the integrated monitor on this was always good on the Helium. It was always okay. But the new monitor that they worked with on small HD with this guy, I love it. Um, it's fast again. It has all your features, just like the old monitor. So you can go through all the menus and change all the settings but it's actually quick, <laughs> which is super cool. And um, the color is great. The brightness is great. You need a bright monitor if you're not using uh, EVF outside or any kind of viewfinder. You need a bright monitor. It's the only way to go. And I love what they did with it. Um, there's a few issues I have, but overall, super solid monitor. And then you're not even using SDIs when you have that monitor. So you can send a different overlay to that too which just makes this camera so versatile. My very favorite thing about this camera has to be the color science. I don't know why I haven't gone into the color science yet, but the color on this thing is absolutely gorgeous. It's a big step up from the Helium. Your images straight out of camera without LUTs or, or grading look way more filmic. You know, it's a lot warmer. Skin tones are warmer. The greens are warmer. Uh, they don't look as scientific. Um, that is the number one reason to buy this camera, honestly, <laughs> in my mind. And it also matches with Komodo, which is just another plus, because we have that as a B cam. So this is our A cam, Komodo's the B cam. This guy, we're either gonna rent or sell. Anyone wants to buy it, hit me up. Uh, but it's still solid. I still view this as a workhorse. Like I don't yet view this as a workhorse because honestly, we've had some issues with it. We'll go into that in another video. But this, I trust my life with. We've only had one small issue that they sent us a totally new camera for, and that was years ago. But I view this as just like, this is a solid camera. I think this will also grow into that a mindset of mine is being like our workhorse for our company. Uh, that's my hope <laughs> anyway. And like I said, we'll have a few, we had a few small issues that I think are now mitigated and fixed. So if you wanna hear about those, you know, tap the link below.